Hi, welcome to Occupy Brooklyn TV. I'm Atik Zabinski. This week's show is dedicated to Occupy Sandy, the hurricane relief effort led by Occupy Wall Street. We'll take you for an up-close, in-depth look at the heroic efforts of people helping people without the aid of government. But first, this news from Los Angeles. On November 9th, over 100 activists from Occupy LA marched to the downtown offices of four banks the occupiers feel are responsible for the foreclosures facing many LA residents. Tell me what you're wheeling here. Uh, this is my credit card guillotine. Uh, originally, I, I had this, I have a Citibank card, but uh, just for this, I made the Bank of America. We're here today at Deutsche Bank. They are the bank that's foreclosing on Fortress of the Lucero family. So I have somebody here speaking about that. You see, I'm from East LA. So this whole Occupy movement all started elsewhere. I was unaware. I don't know what's going on. See, my community isn't informed. I come from a, from a minority community. We don't know what the hell's going on. We don't know what banks do. We don't know what mortgage people do. I don't know what a loan shark is. The family didn't deserve to lose their home. They made all their payments on time. They asked for loan modifications that were rejected because the contract in the first place was made for the home to be foreclosed. That is not fair. I am here because I dislike the living hell out of these banksters. My neighbors are going elsewhere. My neighbors are homeless. I am homeless. Take out your cell phones. Here's the number to Deutsche Bank. Start calling them. Shut them down. Log up their line. illegally foreclosing uh, the, uh, the Lucero family. They're uh, trying to take their house uh, by any means necessary and we're out here today to try to tell them that this is not right, this is wrong, we know that you're corrupt, we know what you're doing, we won't stand for it. Justice! Justice. So we seem to be coming up here to uh, the Wells Fargo, Wells Fargo headquarters in downtown Los Angeles. I'm here in representation of the Nico Black family. She's a 38-year-old woman with terminal cancer who was never late on a payment. In fact, her home was pretty much paid for. But Wells Fargo and Pacific Atlantic Realty targeted her to steal her home. At 6 o'clock in the morning on October 10th, she was woken out of bed. She actually had to crawl to her wheelchair to show federal court orders to be able to prove that the scam that Wells Fargo was doing was false. It was a scam. The Orange County Sheriff busts down their door with representatives of Wells Fargo. They make lewd comments to her. They were inappropriate sexual comments to a woman that's having seizures and a stroke who can barely breathe, sitting in her wheelchair, holding up her federal court order. We're here supporting the people who's uh, fighting uh, an ugly struggle because um, the banks with all their money are taking the homes of the people and uh, we said that's not right. It's not right that people is working all their lives and uh, suddenly they, they lose everything just because some greedy people want to get more, more pennies for them because they have all the money and uh, they don't care. While some in Occupy Los Angeles chose to curse at or taunt the police, I decided to try to talk to one of them. Do you know that Thomas Jefferson, the father of our country, said that dissent is the highest form of patriotism? I'm moving. I'm moving. I'm moving. Our country was founded on dissent. And if we feel that the banks got bailed out and the rest of us, including you, got sold out, then this is all right to be here protesting this. Not getting an answer, we're on to the next bank, Bank of New York, Mellon. 
They're trying to foreclose on our house. They're trying to foreclose on our house. We're out on day. I don't even. Day 70 something. 76. 76. Of uh, Fuerza Hernandez and. We're not leaving. They keep saying that they're sending the sheriffs, that they're sending the police. They keep doing it continuously. But we're not leaving. We're not, we're not leaving. leaving. We're not leaving. We're, we're not, not leaving. leaving. Fuck Mellon Bank. Fuck Mellon Bank. Justice for Bertha Herrera. Justice for Bertha Herrera. Justice for the Hernandez family. Justice for the Hernandez family. Justice for those who have been thrown out on the street. And justice for those who have been thrown out on the street. Resist. 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 We will. Today we're here to protect families, to keep them in their homes, to say F the banks who have been deliberately and systematically kicking families out of their homes and profiting off it. It's just deplorable and it needs to stop. I drive 50 miles to come here because I love these people. They're compassionate. They, they understand there are people hurting and if one, if one injustice affects one, it affects all. In the banks, all in the banks, come crashing down, come crashing down, all in the banks, come crashing down. How I would love to be in that numbers, all in the banks, come crashing down. All in the people, all in the people. Right, but if you don't make over 375,000 a year or have seven million in assets, then chances are you're part of the 99%. Do you see that these people in the Occupy movement are fighting for you? Can you just answer me that question? I won't show it to your employers at B of A. Bank of America has been found guilty of writing bad laws. Black and brown families. In next week's show, we'll talk with organizers from Occupy Foreclosures and visit the homes of the Lucero and Hernandez families, victims of foreclosure fraud. It has been over two weeks since Hurricane Sandy struck New York City, devastating neighborhoods in Brooklyn, Queens, and Staten Island, as well as many other places in the region. Official relief response has been shockingly inadequate, and recovery has been agonizingly slow. Approximately 120,000 homes and businesses remain without electric power in New York and New Jersey, and agencies such as the Red Cross and the Federal Emergency Management Agency have proven inept at helping people meet their basic survival needs. This disaster has set the stage for a ground-level mobilization of mutual aid, citizens helping one another with a degree of organization and commitment that puts the government to shame. Occupy Wall Street has been leading this mobilization of the people, a fact acknowledged even by media outlets as mainstream as USA Today and the New York Times, which have long been calling the movement dead. Well, I'm from the neighborhood, and um, I've met a number of people as I've been volunteering the last few days, and we're all basically just here to support this cause and our fellow Brooklynites and New Yorkers um, to make sure they get back on their feet. We loaded this truck up, it's going to Coney Island, so it's primarily uh, just the day-to-day -day needs, things like cleaning supplies, baby food, diapers, washcloths, paper products, toilet paper, all that kind of stuff. 520 Clinton is the hub, and they've been in contact with all of the various outposts throughout the, uh, the boroughs. Coney Island had told them these are the things that we need. We came to volunteer to drive. It's all, all of the different points come together and that's how it gets communicated. We have a main distribution center where volunteers and uh, donations are dropped off and then we have this car shuttle service which is just uh, people that have cars that are willing to drive places that, that leave from here and 520 Clinton Avenue um, and take goods to one of these like 18 plus recovery sites that are all around the city. And so we're leaving like on a regular rotating basis and with full convoys that go out to these locations with hot meals, donations, and uh, volunteers to help with the cleaning and recovery. Uh, I'm Mark Pertzels from the Solana Software Foundation. I have about 20 years experience working okay. in natural disasters and complex emergencies and uh, just arrived at 520 Clinton and this is actually one of the better organized and systematic uh, operations I've seen that have cropped up in the immediate aftermath of large-scale disasters, so well done. This is a place that opened up a week before the hurricane as a community center and training for workers. And it's called YANA, which stands for You Are Not Alone. 
Yes! So we think it's a more than fitting name. We don't need to rename it for any reason. So on Saturday night, some friends and I um, set up an Amazon wedding registry. We put up the items that people in the affected areas need most. So people can go on there from all over the country and buy those items for those people and get them to them, as opposed to people just buying items that we don't need. AM, FM radios, crank radios with USB adapters so people can charge their cell phones. Um, Camera, uh, disposable cameras so people can take pictures of their property and use it for insurance claims. Beach 57th Street and Rockaway Beach Boulevard is a large housing project called Oson Village. And um, Occupy, Occupy Sandy Relief is basically running the entire relief effort for that whole neighborhood. Um, we're also partnershiping with the Rockaway Youth Task Force. And there are a bunch of teenage kids that are just awesome. And together, um, with Occupy, we've, we've canvassed thousands of apartments in that area in, this, in the, the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. We've knocked on thousands of doors and we're trying to get these lists together so, and, and pass them on to medical folks, that, uh, people who need medical help, need prescriptions, need insulin, stuff like that. Who's coordinating this? this uh... I don't know. Who's coordinating but whoever's Miguel. doing it, Miguel. bless them. Yeah. Bless they heart. Yeah. It's beautiful they that they're doing who's coordinating it. This, I am. It's beautiful. It's my man Miguel. He been looking out How for Beach 84. He been looking out for us. Yeah, my name is Miguel Vargas. I'm on this site with my wife Christine Donahue. I was going heading down the wrong path. It took a tornado to wake me up and to see that I need my community more than me needing negative things. So far, the government is not really doing what it's supposed to do for this community. Occupy Wall Street is the one that really put mostly all this together so the community could get together and have food, water, toilet tissues, and pampers for their for family. There are so many people in these high-rise public housing units that have literally been trapped on high floors without electricity to utilize the elevators or running water in many of these buildings. So uh, for some, the first person they saw in five days was someone from the Rockaway Youth Task Force or Occupy Wall Street that knocked on their door to see if they were all right. Yes, yeah, yes, it was really sad because um, so people said they didn't eat in three days, didn't drink water in three days. And I was like, within 10 minutes, honestly, all the food we bought was gone. It was really sad. There's ketchup and uh... Put it on the pot, I got ketchup and all that stuff at home. All right, good. If I get candles, I can find it. <laughs> okay. We don't have no power. They're saying that they're not turning the power on for two weeks. That's ridiculous. We have no gas. We have no light, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? And number one, <laughs> you wouldn't even believe it. I might be grown and all of that. I'm very afraid of the dog. I like to sleep with a little night light or You know, a little light or something like that. It scares me. There's a lot of people that lost everything, and they're not really getting any government help. So we're doing what we can. Fortunately, a lot of donations have been coming in. Um, but there's really basic needs still, uh, like candles and blankets stuff to keep people warm. Power's probably gonna be out for another week or two or three, so that those are needs that are gonna keep being uh, needs, you know, urgent needs. So how are you guys powering this right now? Right now we have this truck from uh, Greenpeace that came that's uh, solar powered, is it? Yeah, solar yeah, powered. Solar powered. <laughs> and uh, we're charging people's phones with that, and we have some lights in there. We have a functioning bathroom, thank God. And they need more than just food. They need more than just clothing. They need, they really need something to do. They need, they need hope. So right now I'm trying to talk to folks. I'm like, hey, also send some basketballs. Also send some bubble wands. I, I bought every single bubble wand in a 99 cent store yesterday and gave them out to kids. And the kids were like, hey, the kids that saw me doing that were like, give, give them to me. And then I ran out, you know, and it, that's hard. You know, I haven't traveled in third world countries myself, but that's what people say it's like. So it's, it's kind of like that in the Rockaways right now. It's just, I mean, you always feel like you can't do enough, you know? I, I gathered everything I could find at home and put it all in a suitcase, and as soon as I got here, I got rid of it so quickly. Um, I, I have some flashlights I give them to some folks, and then there's just like a crowd of folks. The sun's going down. This happened every night in the Rockaways. The sun goes down. There's little kids and old folks and all kinds of folks who are just like, please, you have a flashlight, do a flashlight. And I, and I hand out all my flashlights, and, and I always carry them with me. I like pack all my pockets full of flashlights. And then I'm out, and then people are like, I'm in the dark, please. And I'm like, I don't have anything else. Yeah, if y'all could get a, I need a flashlight. I'm no good. I need a flashlight. Oh. Okay. Thank you so Stay much. Y'all yeah. be careful, because this is mad dog. Everything there. We're trying to set up appropriate medical relief. Do uh, we gave Doctors Without Borders um, a site 
but they're very limited in what they can handle. So we're trying to get another site. So because we have a lot of medical folks and mental health experts that are coming in and wanting to help out, but we need good locations for them, clean, quiet, indoor locations. I lost the house I live in, and uh, unfortunately, I mean, I've been living out of my truck and on friends' couches for like the past week. I mean, I. I I gave most of my medicine because I'm diabetic, so is my mom. So I gave her most of my medications because I'm worried about her. You know, I'm still young. You know, I just basically just watched what I ate and just took a little what I had. You know, but now, thank God I came here. The doctor was here. I need to get through this pile and get it out of the way, and then we can handle the methadone needs and then send out a new round of canvassers to buildings tomorrow morning. A lot of asthmatics, a lot of high blood pressure, a lot of hypertension, a lot of diabetes. I mean, we're operating under the assumption that almost 75% of the residents of this area are diabetic because we've had that many requests. Everything about this has been ad hoc. It's just been really a mixture of Occupy, community organizations, residents who have kind of just been transformed into community organizers overnight. They've really been doing a lot of the legwork, um, but really the formalized institutions I mean, we know American Red Cross, FEMA, the NYPD, they've been essentially just useless in this neighborhood, and it's really been the volunteers in the community that have kicked into high gear. The police are really disoriented and disorganized. They All, they, all I've seen them do in this whole area is uh, look after the generators and the cell phone charging stations and look after the gas station so that well, there's no think, madness there. I don't think that that's disorganized. Their <laughs> priorities are wrong, and that's just it. That's true. But also, we were asking for shelters, for example. They had and no they idea did. where shelters were. They had no idea where donations could be dropped off. I think what appeals to people about this operation is that they can really just walk through the door and help very rapidly. I reached out to a number of service organizations um, spearheaded by the city and none of them got back to me. Um, I reached out to Occupy and because everything is so on the ground and so current, you just can jump right in. When people come through the door, we have volunteer check-in and we try to get a sense for what people both can do and want to do. A guy, you know, comes over here like with a, with a, with a, uh, a 40, you know, in his hand and he's like, oh, what are you guys doing? Can I have something? Yeah, of course, man, here, take this. Here's something, you know, he's like, oh, really, really? Puts away his bottle and becomes our doorman. And he's like, I can say, you know, it's like, it's like he's like all he's in power now and he's like oh, great he's got he owns this you know and it's just oh, it's just that's the beauty of it i originally came here because my friend lives around the corner and i knew that she needed help cleaning up her place she got three feet of water inside her house and that felt like something concrete that i could do to help out was come help her out and then it turns out that this community center uh opened up a week ago and uh, before the hurricane before the hurricane yeah and so yesterday when there were people looking for a place to start a free kitchen the owner of the spot uh, opened up the shop for us and let us set up inside. And I saw I saw Sal out here, and, he, and I was you know saying hi. I was uh, talking to people, and then I I, I said, hey man, how are, how are you? And he's like, I lost everything, man. The business, you know, the, the the thing. I just started this business a week ago. I worked really hard, and now now this happened, and I don't know what to do. And you know, and, and I was like, hey, can can we use your spot to set up to set up stuff to set up you know uh, supplies? Can we help? Can we use your place to help the community? He was like, that's exactly what I want to do. And boom, I mean, next thing you know, we just moved in stuff and it just filled up so quickly. Leaders are stepping up. People that didn't know they were community organizers until yesterday, a few days ago or today, are stepping up in these communities. Ocean Village, the district site now, the Occupy site, is basically run by this woman, Bree, who's from the buildings there. She's awesome. She's, she knows she knows who's taking too much. She knows who's not speaking up enough. She knows, you know, who needs help the most. So there's no favoritism. And then Jose, who lives there, um, he's full time. He's full time. He's, he's he he said he predicted this. He summoned this. He summoned Occupy to him. That that he knew it would happen. He wanted to go to Scotty Park last year and he couldn't make it. He's a family and he he was too busy with his kids. And now and we came to him. We're in his building. And he's just like, I'm Occupy Far Rock Away. This is this is what I'm doing now. Let me take let's take over some buildings. Let's do this. Let's 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 change everything. So it's awesome. awesome. I mean, we have so many community folks here who they keep on telling us like, oh, you know, a week ago I never thought like, oh, I'm gonna be running a distribution center at St. Camilla's, you know what I'm saying? And now like you know, they're becoming organizers, they're becoming like they're becoming uh, committed, you know, uh, helpers, committed, you know, supporters and it's funny how many of them were like, Oh, I wanna join Occupy Wall Street and it's like you know, we, 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 you know, we always joke, like, oh, should we let them in? Should we let them in? Why do you think it is that Lower Manhattan got its power back in a few days? And we didn't? Yeah. 
because they want us to leave. They want Rockaway residents to leave Rockaway so they can rebuild it into terrorists to have people to spend more money live here. They don't want low income houses here. We're trying to figure out why they're able to get Manhattan up, all lower Manhattan, why? but they can't get. Because that's where the money's at. That's where the money's at. That's where the money's at. We poor over here. They know this is a poor neighborhood. Even though they're trying to build it up with those houses they put down there by Stop and Shop. The low income people, minorities especially, are in these projects and they forgot about us. We are the last to be taken care of. If you have money, you have power. If you have money, you have electric power, right? All sorts of power. But America is a, it's a wonderful idea, but it has, there's a lot of work it needs to be done. At first, we were sort of like a little bit careful to like say Occupy is coming to save the day, but eventually, like we noticed how important it was for folks to understand that this is not like FEMA, you know, this is not like the government. A lot of folks like still think that it's FEMA. Essentially, like when they see a news location, they assume it's FEMA. At 7 p.m. every night, we have a community meeting, which is probably the the most important part of all this process. And that's something that like Red Cross and like FEMA don't give a damn about, right? I mean. You know, what we're trying to do here is, is establish that, you know, a, a, a location where the community can go for more than just their basic need. You see the people come together more. You see uh, everyone going out of their way to do the right thing. You know, so it's interesting because uh, sometimes you ask yourself, why can't it be done all the time like that, you know? You know, I see it like this. You know, it, it it don't make no it, it don't make no sense that it take you know death or a tragedy like this for people to come together and help. You know, and that's the main time you see people coming together to help each other is when it's a death or a funeral, you know, or it's a tragedy like this. The people out here in the Rockaways are endlessly impressing me. It's cheesily enough, it's renewed my faith in humanity. I I can't believe that these folks out here. You you bring a bunch of free items to a lot of places in this country. I just assume people will be selfish and they'll grab and they'll take as much as they want and, and people out here have nothing and they're seeing horrific things happen. They're still pulling bodies out of these houses around here. Are, are taking just what they need, almost always. But it's funny how many folks that didn't have training with Katrina say that like if it wasn't for Zuccotti they wouldn't have been ready for this moment, which is just blows my mind, you know, that like essentially it was like training us. If it wasn't for Zuccotti, I think a lot of the organizers here, um, or the ones who were the the folks who are you know helping out, like they they wouldn't sort of understand the way that we work, right? And and the way that like things get done quicker. We're all growing. We're all growing. I mean, Occupy Wall Street is. I think it's learned its lesson with money. It's learned its lesson with this is with like community building. Like this is proving to the world that like the organizers that were with Occupy Wall Street were serious about you know, creating a world that they want to see. The best example, I think, is the Chilean movement, the Chilean student mm -hmm. movement, who was criticized for a while and then was like regained its sort of reputation when the earthquake hit and Chilean students mobilized. It's the, it's the power of the networks that are already there. And two National Guard uh, military trucks pulled over right in front, um, like with people in full military uniform, helmets and camo and all sorts of shit that has nothing to do out here. And, um, and we got kind of anxious and kind of confused, like we didn't know if they were trying to shut us down, if they were trying to mess with what we were doing. And, um, and they pulled over Sal, the owner of this place, uh, to the side and uh, then they came over to us and let us know that they were here because they wanted to drop off all their food and water. They had the, the, both trucks were full of food and water and they... Uh, they wanted us to have it and hand it out because they don't really have drop-off spots. They're not right. really doing this work, you know, and they wanted us to, they recognize that we are doing it, that we've, you know, that this is working and that people yeah. are coming here and that we're distributing throughout the Rockaways. And so they left us all their supplies. And as soon as they said that, all the volunteers and all the neighbors that, ha that were here asking for, for aid got into human chains and started unloading these trucks. And we started chanting, um, we are unstoppable, another world is possible. And everyone was chanting, everyone was super excited. And two cops, <laughs> two cops started clapping.
laughing and chanting and like oh hanging my God. out with them. <laughs> and it was just they an were unreal moment. They were chanting yeah. Another World is Possible. I swear to God. And so then they cool. were chanting Ain't No Power Like the Power of People because the power of people don't stop. See yeah. what? It was wild. Everything I own now is destroyed and it's okay because it's like it's, it's been rather enabling and um, it's like you, you, you hold on to stuff and everything is just stuff. And sometimes it's better, it's healthier to let go of stuff because it's just stuff. And it's like a bed or it's a couch or it's a rug or it's a dresser. It doesn't matter. It's all shit. It's all stuff. So many folks have been like, I've lost everything. I've I, I lost my home. I, everything's destroyed. My whole life is destroyed. But I've never felt better in my life because they were like essentially wait. It's so crazy. They're like, I'm so sad that we have to wait for this moment for us to be like so close and create a community. And I... It just makes you appreciate life. Even the wind on my face that's freezing right now, it feels nice, you know? It's like, uh, it's a good day today. This is, this is why we're so addicted to this, because we're all in love. We will continue to report on Occupy Sandy as the situation develops. We urge you to get involved. To find out how to help, visit OccupySandy.org. And that's our show for today. Let us know what you think. Give us a call at 646-580-8446 or email us at info at I'm Atik Sabinski. Thank you for watching.